Shot Four of The Right Way to Do Wrong, an Exposé of Successful Criminals. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Leanne Howlett. The Right Way to Do Wrong, an Exposé of Successful Criminals by Harry Houdini. Shot 4. Burglar's Superstitions Some people imagine that a burglar is forever on the still hunt for plunder, that the breaking into houses forms a nightly part of his program, and that he would be a lonesome individual unless he had a dark lantern in one hand and a jimmy in the other. The truth of the matter is that professional burglars rarely make more than eight or ten good hauls in the course of a season, and that to be out on more than one job inside of a week or ten days would be considered rather dangerous. Of course, there are cases where gangs of burglars are working certain sections of the city where a number of startling robberies are committed one after another, but your careful and successful cracksman limits his work and increases his safety. The burglar, no doubt, may be a quiet citizen, a householder himself, and one known as a respectable man to his neighbors, and when occasionally he disappears for a week or a fortnight, it is attributed to business in a distant city. His business brings him in another rich hall, and when that is disposed of, he is on easy street again until inclination or necessity compels him to go forth in quest of other plunder. Sailors are superstitious, but burglars share that honor with them, for there is no class of individuals who look more carefully to signs of good and evil omen than does your professional crib-cracker. An ex-convict whom I once befriended in Omaha, and from other sources, I learned the following most common superstitions of thieves and burglars. A black cat is a certain forerunner of disaster to the burglar, and householders who suddenly find their black cats poisoned may take it as a warning that the robbery of their domain has been decided upon for the criminals take care to destroy their dumb enemies before paying a midnight call. Dogs, on the contrary, they fear but little, however savage they may be, because they take care to carry in their pockets pieces of ivory, a certain cure for dog bites. The cries of an infant warn the marauder that misfortune awaits him in the neighborhood. He will not stay in a house if he finds a clock stopped, a broken mirror, or an unframed oil painting. These are infallible omens of disaster. One of the chief terrors of the burglar is a newly painted house. Several years ago in a northern town, some disciples of the jimmy broke into a large domicile, but removed nothing, though they favored the next house with a visit the same evening and stole everything of value. They were captured as they were scaling the garden wall, and at the trial one confessed that they had spent eight weeks in making preparations for entering the house from which they removed nothing and upon doing so found it to have been freshly painted, so transferred their attention to the adjoining building, thereby bringing about their capture. A criminal studies the weather quite as carefully as the farmer does. He will not perpetrate a crime on the night of a new moon, nor if the orb has a halo or mist round it. And were he to plunder a house during an eclipse, he might as soon give himself up to the law at once, for his days outside of prison walls would be numbered. Even more trifling incidents are of equal significance to the robber. It is bad luck to be followed by a dog, and any undertaking or plundering plan will be abandoned for the time, as it means capture or failure. If the house selected has crepe on the door, to enter would be to court disaster, and to kick against a piece of coal in the road would bring about a similar result. Pickpockets are very careful not to rob a cross-eyed or club-footed person. To rob a blind man would be to bring down misfortune, but curiously enough a blind woman can be victimized with impunity. A stolen purse that contains a battered coin or lock of hair is thrown away intact, or the thief will find himself a prisoner before the day is out. Talismans are freely carried and implicitly believed in. Burglars in the olden days used to rob a house by the light of a candle made of human fat, but the superstition has nearly died out owing to the difficulty of procuring material to make them, although it is still prevalent to some extent in Scotland and Ireland. When Burke and Hare were murdering human beings for the medical profession in Scotland in 1828, it is claimed they also supplied human fat to burglars, the doctors giving Hare a few bottles, as they were told it was a good cure for rheumatism. 
The medicos treated it as a joke, but Hare sold it to some of the housebreakers he was intimate with. Old nails, broken horseshoes, curiously shaped pebbles, and endless other trinkets have times without number been found in the pockets of captured criminals who have begged that everything else they possessed should be taken from them rather than the talisman to which they pinned their faith. Charles Peace, perhaps the greatest burglar who ever lived, said that his success was due to the pawn ticket of a violin he pawned when he was a boy, and which he always carried with him. Safe Cracking Our chapter on burglary would scarcely be complete without some reference to safe cracking as a special division of the profession. It is a comparatively small matter to break and enter a house and get away with valuables, but to effect an entrance into a well-guarded bank and succeed in opening safes which have been constructed with every appliance known to the modern safe-builder's art is an entirely different proposition. The cracking of such a crib is the work of an experienced and especially skillful man. My friend James Sargent of Sargent and Greenleaf, Rochester, New York, invented the time lock. Cracksmen would rout the cashier out of his bed with a loaded revolver and force him to go to the bank and open the safe. But now with the time lock and other safety electrical safeguards, the old burglar tools are worthless. Where once tools were used in cutting off locks, tearing off plates, drilling through the lock so as to pick the combination, the cracksman has kept a pace of the times and utilizes modern scientific methods to open safes. To open a time lock, they first start in and by hammering the safe break the clockwork. Now they resort to either a large carbon and get their electricity by tapping the trolley car current and burning circles around the lock, or they make use of a terrible compound invented by Goldschmidt, a man I met in Essenruhr, Germany. This compound is called thermit. This is a kind of a mixture of fine aluminum filings or powder and iron oxide. When this mixture is ignited by suitable means, it gives the extraordinary heat of 3,000 degrees centigrade. This compound or concoction, if allowed to flow on top of a safe, will burn a hole clear through most any safe made. I was in Berlin when the first tests were made, and one enterprising safe manufacturer built a safe that was invulnerable to this immense heat, and calls it the anti-thermit Geldschrank. Burglary is no longer crude robbing, but an art. The only men who were able successfully to overcome the obstacles of the safe makers and locksmiths, and at the same time avoid the police, are the ones who employ as much care and thought in their work as a successful businessman. The man who once turned to burglary as a last resort chose a dark night to force his way into a store, and after hours of work with files and saws, forced the door from the safe, can no longer succeed. The only men who succeed in their efforts to open safes now are the ones who often spend weeks studying conditions and preparing their instruments. The resistance offered by the fine grades of steel used in safes usually destroys the tools used to open the locks. The ingenuity of the safe cracker is greater only than that of the burglar and sneak thief who depends on the use of skeleton keys and jimmies to make his way past locks and bolts. The skeleton key can only be used in picking simple locks with wards. The burglar's jimmy is often a plain iron bar, sharpened at one end that permits its insertion beneath a window or at the side of a door. Some of the professional burglars, however, carry sectional jimmies that for efficiency are greater than any other burglar tool manufactured. Safe burglars often purchase old safes and practice on them. Nowadays they work almost entirely on the lock. The method is first to remove the dial with a special jimmy and then drill a small hole five-eighths of an inch above the spindle, and with a knitting needle or fine wire, pick up the combination and thus open the safe. End of shot four. Recording by Leanne Howlett.